Hello everybody, welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another Rallycross build in the form of the fearsomely overpowered Bone Shaker. In, at least in Horizon 4, I don't, I don't remember Horizon 5 if it's slightly different, but this car has been notorious for being OP, especially in A class. And well, we're going to see how it fares in mid S1 class. I think it's going to do pretty well. Whether or not it's going to beat the Opal, I do not know. But it has a few things going for it. First, it is very lightweight. Even with all-wheel drive, it's under 2,300 pounds. Also, despite appearances, it will get full arrow. It's weird arrow, but I'm not complaining. It's awesome. It's easily the best arrow kit on any Forza car. It's fantastic. I am a little concerned about the ride height, however, that can be offset by the quite frankly hilarious tire sizes. 375s are already bigger than whatever you get on most cars. And we're going to bring up the 455s. Lamborghini Countach, eat your heart out. Yeah, this thing is insane. We are going to put it on rise suspension. It, it raises us a whole inch. And we can get even more, almost as awesome in terms of the rear wing, a full blood exoskeleton. Yeah. That's just cool. We don't have any weight reduction or anything. But, you know, uh, it's already so insanely light, I don't think it really matters. I'm not sure if this engine is going to be enough, to be honest. It's not bad. It's getting up in PI, but, yeah, it, it's not enough. We're at... Just about, we're about 15 PI below the limit, so let's see what we got. Actually, I don't know. We got a diesel, that's not great. We got the V... Oh. We might have to go with... Can I do anything else? Because <laughs> I don't want a diesel. I can do that. Um... Game, why are you doing this to me? That's upgrade, that's upgrade. Game... Don't you do this to me. Don't you do this to me. Um, I can do that, but that just adds like 100 pounds to it. We're a long ways off the PI limit. Um, we can do that. That saves 46 pounds. Seven, yo, we're gonna do that. <laughs> they're not very nice looking, but they're better than, you know, those. Because you know, I'm not really supposed to ask... Oh, we'll go with those. Those are fine. Um, now, that's interesting. You know what? I might go with stock tires. Because not only does that save 10 pounds, which is a decent amount. But also, we're already all-wheel drive. And... It's not like 375s of less than 600 horsepower is excessive. So, I think we're going to do that, actually. And then, I, th I think we're going to leave it at that, because I really don't want the diesel engine. That's the only thing that fits. So, I think that's going to be our build. It's a very different build. Stock tire sizes on the rear. And a decent bit below the class. I, mean, I think it's about the same as the Transit now, to be honest. And that didn't do particularly well. But this is also a completely different philosophy than the Transit. And who knows, maybe it could be like the Mura. Which nearly beat the Maserati in the last showcase, despite being considerably down on PI. And it's the Bone Shaker. So, you know, speaks for itself. Okay, the Bone Shaker... Despite being a little down on PI, has to beat the Opal Man to B400, Group B Rally, car 1023. I don't know. This is a completely unknown variable. It's it could be like the Mira, or it could be like the Transit. It's more in line with the Mira than as a handling focused vehicle, but I don't know. Whoa. Okay, that's a little suspicious. I didn't really want to turn in there. Yeah, it's... it's. Okay, that's... 
something. Also, I'm paranoid. I'm going to hit the rear wheel on, you know, just anything that I drive by. Because I'll get to cast it with the front wheels and be like, ha ha! And then it just dies. I'm also concerned about the brakes on this vehicle. I wasn't able, they are, they're apparently race brakes. I don't know where I'm going. They're apparently race brakes, but they don't feel like race brakes and I wasn't able to upgrade them. So I'm hoping that it doesn't have stopping issues, but it seems a little lackluster. It feels like one of the Russian cars that upgraded its brakes from an Austin Maxi. But my bigger concern, honestly, is the understeer, because there's a lot of it. Oh, yep, brakes are not good. That is surprising, because it's very light, and yet it's just sort of not stopping. I mean, I know I'm not going full of brakes in an effort to not lock them up, but I've done that same philosophy on many other vehicles, including the Manta, and that was very good. Granted, the Manta didn't need to brake very much, but this thing, ugh, I don't like this car. It's just, it's just not stopping. It's, that's so weird. I don't know if they just forgot to put the upgrade feature on this thing, because I'm braking where I normally brake, and it's not stopping. The turn, and once you're not on the power, is fine. So the understeer is not as bad as long as you're off power, but yeah, it feels very Audi-ish. I think I've built an Audi on accident because it's not turning on the power or if you're carrying a lot of speed and there's just no brakes. None. I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. I mean, I'm carrying good speed, I just can't carry the speed actually through the corners because it just it just doesn't turn and just doesn't stop 107 2 it's in last place right now bone shaker's bad bone shaker's very bad i don't know if it's just like a class thing because sometimes class vehicles that are dominant in one class are terrible in another but i don't know it's so weird I and mean, that's a better run through there that's a much better run Maybe I'm just not used to the vehicle, and I just have to get used to it, but that's a very surprising learning curve, if it is like that, because it felt so bad, and it still doesn't really feel all that good. It made it through the course, but making it through the course quickly... Turn, you... Why is this car struggling so much? It's light. I thought I missed that checkpoint for a second, or I didn't count that checkpoint for a second. I would have been really unhappy. Because it, it wasn't, it was, it went away, but I wasn't sure if it was going to reset me or not. I mean, a 104 isn't terrible. It's more online with the transit's time. I was saying this might be like the transit, and I'm fearing it might be. The transit was fun because it was insane. It was over a thousand horsepower, but this thing is just poor. It's just very, very poor to drive. The transit was poor, but it was poor in a fun way because you were trying to like control the fury and you could control it. It got a mega lap time in the final lap and that was sort of like the challenge of it. This thing is just annoying because you think you can carry good speed because it's a bone shaker because it's light. And then you just go offline and you don't stop and you do that and you hit the stupid invisible clipping point that doesn't make any sense normally, much less with this contraption. Huh. Alright, there we go. We're gonna try and get a nice clean run. Slow and steady wins the race. We're not gonna go crazy. We're not gonna push it. We're just gonna drive it how it wants to be driven, like an old lady. Okay, be nice and careful. Her name is Carol. Okay. We use the handbrake because it still hates that corner. That's the best we've taken that corner so far. But, I don't know. This thing is super weird. Traction is good. That's like the one positive. Traction and acceleration are two things that I can say legitimately positively about this vehicle. They are very good. There is no issue in any regard to that. 
That's the only thing it has no issue with. Now I'm being super careful for that corner because I don't want to follow this run. It is actually a pretty good run. Oh my god! It's second. It's second with a conservative run. I'm, I'm pretty much running out of time to actually do anything with this car because it took so long to get used to it because it's really not that nice to drive. But oh my god, the bone shaker's fast. I say I was wrong. My quarrels are not with the speed of the vehicle, but how it handles. And uh, yeah, it's a fast car. It's a very fast car. It's insane. A terrible run. I shouldn't say a terrible run. A conservative run was a 1025. That's ridiculous. The Manta had to be really pushed in order to get that speed, and this thing had to be nannied to get that speed. And that was actually a really fast run. That was a really aggressive run. I don't. It didn't beat it. Got a 1027 on that last one, but a 1025 is insane. Yeah. Well, it was like the Maserati in the first episode, in the first series, because I didn't like how it drove, and yet it was insanely fast. That was a terrible run. It was about 80%, because I was literally just trying to get a lap that didn't suck. The first four laps were awful. The fifth lap was actually starting out relatively promising, and I was cautious, and I braked early, and I just really focused. And it damn near beat the Opal. If I had actually gotten that first corner right on the final lap, because I did break late, what a surprise at this vehicle, it probably wouldn't have beat the Manta, because that the second half of that final lap was much faster. I was a lot I was pushing it a lot more, I didn't hit anything. So it was probably a considerably amount, considerable amount faster, but I ran wide, and that cost you all of your momentum heading up to the straightaway. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that definitely has to pace. That definitely has to pace to beat the Opal. But it's the consistency. It's just not a very consistent car. I can't consistently get lap times out of it. Because you push it a little bit too hard and it misses the braking zone by a mile. Or you understeer into the tires and you're done. It, it's a very fine vehicle. You really need a true mastery of Forza's physics in order to get the most out of it. Probably why it's an OP car. But regardless, that's insane. I'm not a big fan of that lap because I said it was very conservative, and it damn near beat the Opal Manta. It's less than two tenths of a second off, and it is a tenth of a second faster than the Ferrari and the Peugeot. It was a, it was, on paper, it's a very good car, but it's one that I would not recommend driving. Anyway, that'll be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.